Okay, so last time I didn't prove uh, entirely. I only proved that it is smooth. But this time I will prove that it is piecewise smooth or even it is true under the condition that um, it is rectifiable. Okay, so this the theorem shows that um, shows that this for g1 which is which is which is this function is always is always an integer i mean one over two pi i of this is, is an integer okay <coughs> so that we define the rec uh the winding number so let's just consider if it's piecewise smooth then we can still have this definition with g being continuous but it is differentiable, but at finally many points, right? And for this function, it is also continuous. And its derivative is equal to zero, but at finally many points. But we know that it is continuous. Even though, like, it, it, it is continuous. And it, its derivative vanishes, but at finally many points. Which means that even so, if you vanish at this point, then along those points, you are a constant. But it is continuous, which means that at this point, you're also a constant. Okay? Again, if you don't believe me, you can just formulate a epsilon, epsilon delta proof like that. So this is a constant, which gives, well, the result follows. So if it's rectifiable, then we can approximate this by a polygonal path. And we can control the error by one over two. Okay. Like just anything, but this thing is an integer. Okay. So, which means that this thing turns out to be equal to, because Okay, so if you have, I mean, gamma f, well, then we know that there exists one. Okay, so we always know that for piecewise case, it's an integer. So let's say um, gamma f minus some n, well, it's less than one over two, and the gamma of f minus m is less than one over three. Well, we can apply um, the, the inequality, we can conclude that this is less than or equal to 1 over, I mean, less than 1 over what? Less than 1, right? But that's the thing we want. For that being said, we, we must have n is equal to n, right? So as you're approximating less and less, you get a, like, each piecewise smooth its integer is always the same right so so which means that it is an integer i mean one over two pi i by dividing that but you get the idea right okay so <coughs> and we just continue so we define a triangular path as a polygonal path with only three sides so this is a triangular path this is also a triangular path. And where our focus today is the Morea's theorem. So if G is a region and your continuous function is such that this vanishes for any triangular path, then you are an analytic. So continuous implies analytic. Okay? Now, well, first, it sufficient to show f is analytic in any any disk in g right because g is open right as g is open so we just let G be a ball. 
also it suffices to show that f has a primitive okay why because because f is continuous which means that the primitive is analytic in a disk which means that it is infinite infinitely differentiable well this of course implies that f is analytic right so we want to show that f has a primitive that is our focus right here right okay so let's just start our proof um we define fz to be the integral from the center to z of f okay so we can draw a diagram here draw a diagram here um, so we have a circle right here's our point a here's our point Z okay so this is our this is our line okay a Z F integrate along this path okay but how are we going to use the triangular hypothesis? Well, we fix point Z naught and Z. So like any point like here or like, like somewhere here, right? Z naught. Fix point Z naught. Then we can connect them. To form a triangular path. Well, why is it curved? Right? Then, since, which means that it is equal to what? Is equal to okay so we have a z plus z z naught plus z naught a is equal to zero right which means that which means that This is equal to right. Well, which means that is equal to C not C plus a z naught right well for this right well we have we have this equation right then we know that f of z is equal to f of z naught right which means that f of z minus z naught divided by z minus z naught is equal to 1 over z minus z naught of right okay now 
further. We we subtract both sides by this minus f of z naught is equal to this minus f z naught. Okay, under the integral. Why? Because, well, we have that um, um, z naught is a constant, right? If you're a constant, and well, you're you have a primitive, right? You're primitive. Well, by fundamental theorem of calculus, right? FTC. This gives that f of c naught of c naught minus c, right? I mean, no. C minus c naught, right? So that's the reason behind. That's that's the reason behind there. Okay. So. Okay. So now we further furthermore let's let's do it further. So if we take absolute value, right? Which is this. Well this is less than equal to one over Z minus Zena times the total variation of this curve times the what the supremum of fw minus f c naught where w lies in the line c naught c right yep okay but notice that it is equal to just this thing right because this thing is equal to c minus c naught okay right cancels out well but this thing goes to zero as z goes to z naught since we know that f is continuous okay so this concludes the proof right because well as z approaches to z naught right this the supremum is like less than equal to epsilon right like because f is continuous so this thing goes to zero as z goes to z naught well which means that this goes to zero as z goes to z naught, which means that the derivative of f prime z naught is equal to f of z naught for any z naught, right? For any z naught, which means that f has a primitive. So we're done.